Well, hi everyone. It is Marcus, and I'm sitting down with the delightful Ben Francis from the 64. Welcome, Ben. Thanks for having me. Well, absolute pleasure, and happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, indeed. A nice up. lazy morning. I know. Well, we never stop working, do we? We're always on. I know. Um, now, excitedly, um, you have got a big Australian tour for the 64 coming along, haven't you? Which kicks off, I think, um, pretty soon in the next month, really. Yeah, mid, mid partway through September. So September the 16th is our first show. We're going um, Sydney, um, Ballarat, Melbourne, and then bringing it home to Adelaide. So <laughs> our first East Coast tour. I can't wait. You've got two dates in Adelaide at the Norwood Town Hall, which is October the 7th and 8th, I think yeah. it is. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, um, I saw the one at Norwood Town Hall, I think it was for Adelaide Fringe earlier this year. Um, mm. and you had, um, was it two dates or three dates there? Three dates, yeah. yeah. Totally sold out. It was crazy. It was it was wild. We've never kind of sold sold out that season before, and and we we actually sold out everywhere. We sold out in at the Hopgood down in Norlunga and Shedley um, up in Elizabeth too. So we were just so kind of stoked at the at the demand. Well, I mean, obviously, for people that don't know the sixty four, um, wrap it up for them. Um, tell them what the sixty four is all about. Yeah, so we are, uh, we try and give as holistic as possible a slice of the 1960s and that the amazing music and all of those brilliant bands. So we've got the Beatles, the Beach Boys, Johnny O'Keefe, Frankie Valley of the Four Seasons, Elvis Presley, the Kinks, you know, as many as we can in a two and a half hour um, tribute show. And we've got a nine piece band, it's big sound, big lights, um, big choreography. Um, and big vocals. So it's a it's a two and a half hour yeah, escape to the 1960s. It's pretty insane. And the fashion is pretty good as well. Because yeah. costume change, you know, I buy those jackets. Um, yes. Now, I took my um, parents to the Norwood Town Hall last Adelaide Fringe, um, and mm. they raved about it. Um, I think what's really good about this show is because, you know, you are four young guys doing, you know, the 1960s music. Um, mm. So I feel like the audience that you get is really quite diverse. You know, you get the, uh, you know, the younger guys, girls, and you get, you know, the mature audience as well. And I think everyone walks out of that um, with incredible appreciation of what the 1960s music was all about. Is that how you feel? Yeah, we, we started off, um, our, you know, well, it still is, but our main audience is is the elderly elderly people and, and older audiences. But we've started getting more and more young people through the door. And what's been really amazing is that, you know, you, you kind of try and get them through the door and they're like, oh, in the 1960s, like, what's this kind of, you know, don't don't really know much about it or they think they don't like it. And then they come and they know every single song because the 1960s, they don't realise they do, but they do um, because, because of how influential that music was. And then they come back and then they always come back. So it's like you get young people through the door once and then they're like, they're sold. And, and I think that just speaks to the timelessness of that music, of, of the Beatles, the Beach Boys. There's no music like it. And, and I think whoever you are, you come through and you just like, you get swept up by that amazing sound. I think you totally nailed it um, in regards to getting swept up. I, I noticed that, uh, you know, towards the end of the show, probably about, you know, six, seven numbers before the end of the show, everyone is up on their feet, dancing yeah. in the aisles, dancing in their little space and having a great old time. Yeah. It is a party. And that's what, I, I mean, we, we started, we actually started, um, I was in year 10 at the time, we started in a high school music classroom. Um, we were introduced to um, the music of Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons by Michael Griffiths, um, who's an amazing cabaret performer, and he was our music teacher at the time. And we, we just fell in love with the music. And so there was these, you know, these four young guys who chose, instead of lunchtime, you know, kicking the footy around, we'd go up and we'd, we'd make this, these harmonies together. And, that's, and that passion was how it started. And that passion is what we have in every, every show since. And we can share that passion with our audience now, which is, which is so special. And how long ago was it that you realised, hang on a minute, I reckon we've got something good here? Like, I mean, we, we, that first music classroom, we, it was in 24, end of 2014, start of 2015, um, when we started kind of learning those harmonies. And then, and then we kind of, it was just kind of organically grown since then, but we, we kind of, were, it was 
we have one, our first public performance was at the Adelaide Theatre Guide Awards um, in 2015 uh, at the Entertainment Centre. Hans was the host uh, back in the day. And we, we put together this medley of Frankie Valley songs. So we had Sherry, Bought Like a Man, Big Girls Don't Cry and Bye Bye Baby, I think. And, um, and yeah, so we, we did this, this set and we kind of came off the stage and we all thought, oh, yeah, that's not bad. And we got three gig offers and a standing ovation. And we were like, oh, okay. Maybe there is something here. Maybe it's not, you know, just us um, being idiots in a classroom. Um, and so that, yeah, and that and it went from there and we started putting on public shows um, all the way back in 2015. And have you got a goal venue that you'd love to perform in? To be honest, for a long time, we said um, Thebi and then very amazingly, we we played Thebi last year at, um, in September and it was just the most amazing night. Um, and primarily uh, the reason we wanted to perform there so much was because so many of the artists we tribute had performed there. You know, we were like stepping in there on the stage that they had performed in and, and, and it carried that historical significance. But um, so, yeah, for a long time it was Debbie, but then that was that was a tick box in 2022. Um, but no, not not really. I mean, yeah, one of the one of the other things we love doing is taking our show on the road. Um, especially to regions. That's some of the most special memories that we've had. Um, we've taken it to, you know, Wyala a couple of times, Kangaroo Island, Victor Harbour, Port Piri. Um, we try and, and bring us our show to as much of South Australia as possible because I don't think people do that anymore. Um, you know, they've got all those amazing theatres out there. We go through country arts and those stunning theatres um, and you walk around and like the posters on the walls are from 20 years ago. You know, pe people just don't, to there's so little touring that happens and so being able to take our show to these audiences who are just so grateful that we've come and we we pack you know we pack the whole nine piece band so it's a massive expense getting them out there but it's just so worth it um and so that's yeah we, we want to continue definitely continue doing that i was just going to say about the nine piece bands um they're just exceptional um mm. You know, how hard was it finding the right bands obviously you know finding the four voices was hard enough uh, well, I mean, that sounded quite organic anyway. Um, but uh, finding four voices to put together on stage, you know, is a major feat. Um, but the band as well, how hard was it for you finding the right bands that appreciate that the music? Well, and that's the thing. Um, I mean, they were they were all um, studying um, at Adelaide Uni. So we, we I think it was 2018 where we introduced our band. We took it from backing tracks to a band, which was a massive step for us. And we one of the things we wanted, what I think one of the special things is about our show is that we are for young guys. And so it's it's more, it's like a time machine back to the 1960s rather than four old dudes, you know, singing the songs of their past, which is which is what I really wanted to continue. So I, I knew that I wanted people our age to be our band, um, which we threw another spanner in the works because that's even harder to try and find people that are A, very good musicians and B, that really appreciate this music that are our age. But through the con, we teamed up with Marco Callisto and Emma Simpson-Smith, who were students at the con. Um, I think they were all in first year. Like, we were all just, like, starting out musicians in South Australia, which is actually really cool. Um, and they've kind of grown with us. So they chart all of the band arrangements. So we assembled the nine-piece band from that cohort. They charted all the, all the um, charts, and we put it on, you know, just ourselves. Um, it was 13 youngsters just making this music um and then and it's grown since there we've all got better since high school let me tell you um and, and it's kind of grown um organically together which is really really lovely so five years from now where would you like the 64 to be <laughs> i mean if I, if you were to tell me five like five years ago that we'd be about to do a national tour i'd be, I'd be like oh shut up you know so i i really have no idea i mean it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of time and it's a lot of energy but it's a whole lot of passion so i i really hope that we're able to continue touring i hope that we you know perhaps break into the international market and and do shows over there in in you know england and asia and yeah i don't know i don't know where the future is going to take us but you know if at the end of the day it's making music with our best mates on stage so it doesn't really matter as long as you're having fun, as long as people are coming, keep on doing it, right? Totally, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, now, obviously, you've had a plethora of Adelaideans um, come and see your shows. Um, 
what can you suggest to these people that might be thinking about coming buying tickets uh, for the next show, um, obviously in October? Um, is there going to be any new things that is going to entice them out to buy that ticket? Yeah, we always we always change up our show because there's just so much. It's one of the good things because there's so much repertoire in the 1960s. Every show we do is different. Um, so we um, but yeah, no, we're going to we're going to take it back to the classics um, this time around. So so a lot of the songs that we first started out singing were like the, the big, big hits of the 1960s. And that's what we're going to take it back. So it's just, you know, it's the monkeys. It's Simon and Garfunkel. It's like all of those big um, songs that everyone knows. So it's going to be a massive sing-along set this this time. Um, and my advice is to to book soon because crazily, I mean, we're what, a month and a half out of October. Um, yeah. We're 70% sold for our Adelaide season. So yeah, limited tickets available. So I'd get in quickly um, if you wanted to come along. Well, Ben, this has been an absolute delight on a Sunday afternoon. Um, I absolutely suggest everyone go and get your tickets. It is available um, through uh, the Norwood Town Hall website. I don't know the actual link for that, but um, I'll put it into the post when we do this post. Uh, so look down below. Um, it is the 7th, of 8th, uh, 7th and 8th of October, the 64. We've been with Ben Francis. Ben, you enjoy the rest of your weekends. And I look Thanks, forward to the show. Too. Thank See you, you there. Bye-bye. Thank you. I dropped them in the mailbox and sent it special deal. Well, bright and early next morning, they came right back to me. She wrote a poem. A return to send that address unknown. Who knows, sir?